Okay, so in this video uh, we're continuing to work on our applications of differentiation topics. So, so far we've introduced, we've looked at rates of change and kinematics um, as a specific example of rates of change. We've looked at finding equations of tangents and normals and problems involving tangents and normals. And we've looked at um, stationary points, how to find stationary points of graphs and how to identify what kind of stationary point they are. Now this section um, is not really introducing any new applications of differentiation. It's putting to use the applications we've looked at so far in, um, in examples where we have a general function. So a function perhaps with some unknown coefficients or unknown constant values um, and therefore we're looking at a family of functions. So all the functions that might look like ax squared plus b for example. What do we know about those? What can we calculate for those? I am going to utilise my CADS calculator in this um, particular exercise. Um, there are a few questions where um, we don't quite have the tool. We do have the tools, but it might be really complex or it, it means we result, end up with a form of the equation which is not particularly helpful to us. So I'm going to utilise the CADS where I can um, through these problems. Okay, so the first example, we're going to be looking at a family of functions of this form. Okay. So cubic functions that all fit the form x minus a number squared times x minus a number. Okay. In this case, a and b are positive constants and b is bigger than a. We want to sketch the graph. Okay, so as I've said, it's a cubic function. I can think about if I were to expand that out, we'd get x cubed plus etc. So cubic and it's a positive cubic. So it's going to go up as we go left to right. It's got two x-intercepts. x-intercepts at x equals a. So x-intercepts we know we let y equal 0 which means that the null factor law tells us that the x-intercepts are at x equals a or at x equals b. We know the squared here tells us that when x equals a, we're going to have a touch or a bounce or a turning point. When x equals b, there's just a linear factor, so a power of 1, which means the graph's going to cut the x-axis at that point. Um, let's just have a think about what the graph looks like then at this point. So we know both a and b are positive. Okay, so both, it's all going to be to the right of the x-axis. Um, and b is bigger than a. Okay, and we, so that means we're going to have, we know it's a positive cubic, so it's going to go up as we go left to right. And we know the first turning point will, will, will be where we get the, first x-intercept will be where we get the touch. So it's going to go like this. If it had said a is bigger than b, then a would have been the second one, so we would have cut first and then touched. Okay, so... Um, I'm just going to draw the shape in and then I'll label them as A, as A and B. So we're going to bounce at A or touch at A and then cut at B. So we're going to have an x-intercept at B0 and x-intercept at A, sorry, A0. And we've also got a y-intercept here, so let's work that out. So when x equals 0, y is going to be 0 minus A squared times 0 minus B. So that is negative a squared times negative b. Negative a squared is positive a squared times negative b. And so we've got negative a squared b. Okay, so that is 0, negative a squared b. Okay, um, it should probably say don't you don't need to label the other turning point um, because, well, I'm looking ahead, but I know that the questions that come after are actually going to calculate the coordinates of that turning point for us. So let's come back and label it once we've worked through the parts that do that for us. Okay, so part B, we want to find the derivative of f of x with respect to x. Okay, so our function is x minus a all squared times x minus b. Now, when we get to next year, we can differentiate this. It's a product of two functions. So if we want to differentiate this, we have to, we have to expand this out and then differentiate it. Okay. However, with the unknown coefficients, it gets pretty ugly when we expand it out. Um, and then we're going to end up with a derivative that we can't solve equal to zero by hand. So I'm going to use my CADS to help me here just so that it gets me my derivative in a, in a useful kind of form. Okay. So I'm going to define my function here so I can use it, the CADS to answer the questions about it. Oh, sorry. f of x equals uh, x minus a all squared. Sorry, my touch accuracy is a bit out over on the side there. Uh, times x minus b. Okay, so let's differentiate shift minus derivative with respect to x of f of x. Okay, and we get x minus a times 3x minus a minus 2b. 
Okay, so I wanted that factorised form. If we'd expanded it out, let me just get the CAS to help us, which we could have done by hand. Okay, so we expanded all that. We're going to get lots of terms. And if we then differentiated it, I think, it, let me just shift minus, sorry, derivative with respect to x of. Now, let me just get this differentiate the expanded form. It would give me an expanded derivative. And the problem is where the next question is going to ask me to find the coordinates of the stationary points and I want to solve that equal to zero. That's not going to be a nice, I won't be able to do that by hand. Okay, so by hand we would have got to a point where we got stuck. Um, so I'm going to use my CAS to help me get this derivative here in this factorized form. Um, if, as I said, in year 12, once you know the product rule, if you use the product rule to differentiate this, it's possible to get it to this form. It does take a bit of work, but it's possible to get it to this form that then is going to enable us to do um, part B um, more easily. So I'm going to do part B by hand now that I've got it in this form, but we'll verify it with the CAS. So we want to find the coordinates of the stationary points. So that is solving our derivative equal to zero. So our derivative was, so I'm just going to go back up here in the CAS there, x minus a times 3x minus a minus 2b equals 0. Okay, so null factor law tells us that x minus a equals 0, so x equals a. We actually already knew there was a stationary point when x equals a, but we also are going to get the other one from here. So 3x minus a minus 2b equals 0. So 3x equals a plus 2b, and so x equals a plus 2b over 3. We want the coordinates of the stationary points. Okay, so we want to substitute those back in. So we're going to need to do f of a, which we already know is zero. So the turning the stationary point there is a zero. We already know that one. And we also need to do f of a plus 2b over 3. Now, I might do this algebra by hand just for some good practice. Um, but when we've got our CAS, I'll, I'll go through the steps with the CAS as well. Um, so my function is x minus a all squared. So that means it's going to be, sorry, this. and then it's going to be a plus 2b over 3 minus b. Okay, so if we look at tidying this up, so we think about this as being 3a on 3, okay, so getting a common denominator and putting those together, it's going to be uh, a minus 3a, so it's going to be minus, sorry, it's going to be minus 2a plus 2b over 3, all squared, and this is going to be minus b, so b is 3b on 3, so we're going to have a minus b on 3. Okay. So what I'm doing there is that's 3a on 3 and then I'm subtracting and then this is 3b on 3 and I'm subtracting. Okay, so now let's have a little look. If we don't expand, again that tendency to expand is often really unhelpful. If I take out negative 2 here, I've got now a minus b on 3. And this is a minus b on 3. Okay, so if I look at squaring that first fraction, negative 2 squared is 4, a minus b squared on 9, and we're doing that times a minus b on 3. And so actually not expanding is helpful here because we've got this a minus b squared times a minus b. So on the numerator there, we've just got four lots of a minus b cubed, and on the denominator, we've got 9 times 3, which is 27. Okay, so our other turning point is a plus 2b on 3 and then it was 4 times a minus b cubed on 27. Okay let's just verify that with the CAS so I'm just going to get rid of these expanded lines so I can see more clearly what I'm working with. Okay so we found our derivative then we would have solved sorry menu 3 1 solved our derivative equal to 0 for x, and there's our x values of our two turning points, which we found by hand, and then we would work out f of, sorry, f of a, which is 0, so one turning point with coordinates a 0, and then f of uh, a plus 2b on 3 is 4 times a minus b cubed on 27. Okay, so now we're in a position to label this turning point up here on our graph. The coordinates of that point are a plus 2b on 3 
and 4 times a minus b all cubed on 27. And so now we have a really general graph that if I wanted to sketch the graph of x minus 2 squared times x minus 5, um, it's simply this graph where a is 2 and b is 5. Stick all the numbers in and you've got the graph. Okay. So that's why what we're looking at here is a family of functions. So we can now look at the whole family of the functions for any um, values of a and b that fit this um, particular equation shape. Find the values of a and b if the stationary points occur when x equals 3 and x equals 4. Okay, so we already know that a is less than b, and so we know that this is the first of the stationary points, so we know this one must be when x equals 3. Okay, so we know that um, that, must, that must correspond to the point a0, and that one must correspond to the other point, a plus 2b on 3. Okay, and so therefore we know that a is going to be equal to 3, and we also know that a plus 2b on 3 has to equal 4. We now know a has to be 3. Okay, so that is 3 plus 2b on 3 equals 4. And let's solve for b. So multiply by 3. Subtract 3, I'm sorry, 2b equals 9. And so b is 9 on 2 or 4.5 and a is 3. So if we wanted a um, cubic with stationary points when x equals 3 and when x equals 4, we would need to have the equation. Uh, it would make the equation y equals x minus 3 squared and x minus 9 on 2. Okay, And then that would have stationary points at 3 and 4. Okay, example 2. Determine the fu uh, Consider the function g of x equals x cubed minus ax, where a is a real number and a is bigger than 0. Determine the values of x for which g of x is less than 0. All right, so again, let's think about this graph. So we've got another cubic graph here. If we factorise it, it is x times x squared minus a, which means it is x times x minus root a, x plus root a, would be one way you could think about it. Oh, sorry, plus root a. So you've got three x-intercepts. Okay, You could also find those x-intercepts by solving this equal to 0 which means that x equals 0 or x squared minus a equals 0, which means that x squared equals a, and so x is plus or minus root a. So there's three x-intercepts. Now some people get a bit confused here and they see the squared and they think, oh, these must be turning points at these x-intercepts, but it's not x minus a all squared. Okay, And in fact, if you factorise this, as I said, you would find that if you fully factorise, g of x becomes x times x minus root a times x plus root a. And so these are all linear factors. Okay, Sorry, it's not power of zero, that's just that there's um, no power up there. So all of them are cuts when we, we cut through the x-axis at each of those. So we've got three x-intercepts where we cut through. Um, okay, so if we sketch the graph, let's have a think. It's a positive cubic, three x-intercepts x equals 0 and then plus or minus root a, so nice and symmetric. So I'm going to try and just plot them out a bit so I get the graph in roughly the right place. Okay, so that's root a 0, 0, 0 and negative root a 0. So the question asks where is g of x less than 0? So this is y equals g of x, okay, and this is less than 0 down here below the x-axis and down here, okay? So we can see here that g of x, so it's a, it's a non-linear inequality, so you have to draw the graph. g of x is less than zero when x is less than negative root a, or when x is between zero and positive root a. You might also try, choose to write that using interval notation. So we could say x is an element of negative infinity to negative root a, union, zero to root a. Okay, same information. Okay, part b, find the equation of the tangent to the graph at x equals negative a. All right, so um, let's do this by hand. We'll verify with our cas. So g of x is x cubed minus ax, okay, which means that g dash, um, Actually, let's do what we've got here. So g of negative a is going to be negative a cubed minus a times negative a. So that's negative a cubed plus a squared. Okay. 
So that means it goes through the point negative a, I might write that as a squared minus a cubed. Okay, so that's the point. Remember we need a point and gradient to find the equation of the tangent. So we're going to need gradient of the tangent, which is gradient of the curve at the point. So we need the derivative. It's going to be 3x squared minus a. So the derivative at negative a is going to be 3 times negative a squared minus a. So, uh, sorry, 3a squared minus a. So this means that the gradient of the tangent is 3a squared minus a. Okay, so we've got our point and our gradient, okay? And so we can get the equation of the tangent. So we're going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, equation of a straight line. So our gradient is going to go there in place of m and our coordinates are going to go here. So we can have y minus, now minus the y coordinate, given that the y coordinate's got two terms here, be careful about brackets, equals the gradient, again the gradient's got two terms to it, so let's put it in brackets, times x minus minus a, so it'll be x plus a, okay? So there's our gradient, and there's our y coordinate, and our x coordinate. Okay, let's tidy this up, make y the subject. So we've got y minus a squared plus a cubed. I'm just going to expand it out so it's that times that, the whole bracket, so that we're still going to have gradient times x. And then that'll be plus, and um, that's going to become 3a cubed minus a squared. Okay, actually I might just, so I don't confuse you there, I might just write that as I've just done 3a squared minus a times a. I'll expand that out at the next step. Okay, so we're going to have 3a squared minus ax. And then I'm going to expand this out because I want to collect it together with the terms that are going to come from over here on the left-hand side. So that is 3a cubed minus a squared. I'm then going to also add these terms over here. So we're going to have plus a squared and minus a cubed. Okay, so it is 3a squared minus a x and we've got 3a cubed minus a cubed so it's plus 2a cubed and we've got negative a squared plus a squared so they cancel out. Okay so let's confirm, let's define this function menu 1 1, let's confirm it with our CAS so g of x was equal to x cubed uh, minus a times x, be careful with the multiplication you need to actually type it and then if we want tangent menu 4 9 for tangent line we want the tangent to g of x, comma, when x is equal to negative a. And we get, um, okay, so if we were to, so the CAS gives us, let me just write that over here in a different, so the CAS gives us a times 3a minus 1x plus 2a cubed. If you were to just expand that out, that is 3a squared minus a x plus 2a cubed, which is exactly what we've got by hand. Okay, so do what you can by hand um, in this exercise. I think you should be able to do most of it by hand. I just, in that one example, I just, we needed to make sure we got that derivative in a particular form. But by all means, have a play around and check that you can do the questions with your CAS as well, thinking about how you work efficiently, defining functions to make your work more efficient, making use of things like tangent line, um, solving derivatives equal to zero, etc., etc. Okay, so exercise 11, uh, 18H, sorry, is the work for today.